Blender version 4.0 is out, which means there's a few new nodes that have to be tested. I was really excited for the repeat zone node, so I had to try something. Since I don't have too much time to play around with it, I thought of the simplest application, which would be creating these super cool mandala style creations. It's actually going to be really simple to create, and probably the best video to start understanding repeat zone sections. So let's go ahead and start today's tutorial. In our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then switch this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, after which we'll zoom in, select the group input, and tap X to delete it. Now we want to create different variations of this, so I think what we're going to do is just search for a mesh circle. Now this mesh circle has to have the fill type of either n-gon or triangles, and you'll get different variations based on which one you choose. I'll start off with ngon and then just plug this into the group output. Now I'll press 7 to go into the top view and I'll just zoom in to see what we have. I want the vertices to just decrease so maybe I'll start off with 8 vertices and I'll change this later on to get a few more variations. Now the main idea is to take this, subdivide it, and then extrude the subdivisions and scale down the extruded faces and repeat that multiple times. So let's press shift a and search for a subdivide mesh node, plug that in right here and we'll change the level from one to maybe two. To actually see the subdivisions, you can switch over to wireframe and you can see exactly what this is doing. Now remember, if we were to just increase this level, we'd again start getting a very repeating pattern. So you'll have to play around with this to your liking. I'll keep it at a level of two for now and I might change that again later on. Now I want to include a repeat zone so that I can repeat the following operations as many times as I want. So let's search for a repeat zone, plug that in right here. So we have to take the mesh into the repeat input and we can take this output into the group output. Now inside this, right now we have the iterations as one. So it'll behave like this is not even there. Let's see what we want to do. We want to extrude the faces and scale in the extruded faces, which is essentially like insetting each face. So we've done this multiple times in various videos before, but we never had the option to repeat it many times. So let's search for an extrude mesh node, plug that in right here, and I'm extruding the faces. So if you actually look at it from the side view, you can see it's been extruded up. I don't want it to go up. So I'll change this offset scale down to zero. Now to actually make this in set, all we have to do is press shift A and search for a scale elements node. Now we want to scale the faces and we want to scale it down by maybe 0.2, but that just scales everything down. So to make sure that only the newly created faces are scaled down, we take this top selection and plug it into the selection. Now you can see exactly what this scaling does. So that is something that I want to happen every single time this repeat occurs. So let's increase the iterations to two and you can see how the exact same extrusion and scaling was done once again. If we increase it to three, you can see it happens three entire times. To actually see this, what we can do is we can just duplicate these and just press shift D and do that three times. Plug this up right here, plug this right up here. And now if instead of going through the repeat input, I plug this into the mesh input directly and take this output and plug it into the group output, you'll see you get the exact same setup. Nothing changes because the repeat zone repeats the exact same two nodes three times, which is what we set up over here. If we were to remove these two, you can see what the difference is. So right now it looks like this, but if we were to take the repeat zone output and then just change the iterations from three down to two, we get that exact same output. So that is exactly what the repeat zone does. And hopefully that explains it. But the use of using a repeat zone is not just reducing the number of nodes. We also have some more control over this. Let's say this scale value, I wanted to scale down by half every single time. It's actually very simple to do that with the repeat zone setup. All we have to do is use this scale as another input. So now I can choose this scale to start off at a value of 0.5, but every iteration I want it to become half of 0.5. So before this scale goes into the output, I'm going to have to press shift A, search for a math node and actually change this from add to multiply and multiply it by a value of 0.5. So this setup is essentially making sure that this scale on the first iteration has a value of this, which is 0.5. But on the second iteration, the 0.5 gets multiplied by 0.5, which makes it 0.25. And that is what is used for the scale. In the third iteration, if we were to increase it to three, the new value is actually going to be 0.125, which is half of 0.25. So hopefully that makes sense. We can always play around with this scale value to get different variations. And you can see that by itself gives a pretty cool look for you to animate in case you wanted to do so. Just make sure that you don't go overboard that causes this chaos. But remember right now we're able to see all of this simply because we're in the wireframe view. If we were to switch over to a viewport shading of solid, we get the same plane with absolutely none of this seen. So what we can do is actually delete a few of these faces. So let's search for a delete geometry node, but we're not going to delete everything. Instead, we're just going to be deleting faces and we want to delete only the faces and not the points 
associated with the faces. Now we get all of these lines, which again are just the edges, so they don't have any actual geometry and cannot be seen if the overlays are switched off. To make that visible as well, what we can do is first not delete all of the faces. Let's delete only certain faces. So let's press Shift A and search for a face area node so that only faces that are larger than a certain value or smaller than a certain value will be deleted. Let's go ahead and search for a compare node and simply take this area as the first socket. Now we're going to see if the area of the face is greater than let's say 0.1, then they're going to be deleted. So let's plug that in right here. And now you see nothing is being deleted. Even if we were to reduce this to something very, very small, everything suddenly disappears. So that means the face areas are currently very tiny. To fix that, all we do is press Shift A and search for a math node. And we can now multiply this up by a very high amount. So let's switch it to multiply and maybe multiply it by a value of 50. So now if anything is greater than some number, you see we get different controls that looks like this. So I think that by itself is a pretty cool effect. However, for this tutorial, I'm gonna switch this from greater than to less than to get this sort of a look. Now it's not just this that I want to change. I want to actually be able to have all of those other lines that we had. So if you look at this, there's quite a few lines present everywhere that have quite intricate geometries. I don't want to lose all of that information. So what I'll do is I'll actually combine these faces along with these curves as well. So let's press Shift A, search for a join geometry. And now along with this, I want to convert these to curves and then back to meshes. So let's search for a mesh to curve node and plug this geometry in right there. And the curve has to convert back to a geometry so that it can be seen. So let's search for a curve to mesh and simply plug this curve into the curve. And for the profile curve, I'll search for another curve circle. But again, I don't want this to be too high poly. So I'll change the resolution down to three and a radius of something very, very small. Let's go with 0.005 and plug that into the profile curve and the mesh can go into the join geometry. Now, I think this is still way too fat. So let's change this radius down to 0.002 and that seems fairly thin. However, there's also these lines created on top of the faces and that might look cool based on your scenario and you might want it, but I don't necessarily want it. So what I'll do is for the selection, I'll actually take this and plug it in right there. So that way the faces do not get those lines on top of them. If you want them, you can do this and you can see how the lines are present. So that's up to you. I'll keep it like this for now. And you see, you get quite a bit of control. Firstly, you can change this from n-gon to maybe triangles and you see you get a completely different look. But in this case, I'll change this subdivision mesh down to a level of one. And now I get this sort of a look. Similarly, I can increase the iterations. I can decrease the iterations and they all give me different variations. I can change the base scale as well. And you can see you get these really trippy animations as such. And I think that is something that's really cool and worth trying out. You can create infinite variations. You can also increase the number of vertices to get something very circular. Of course, let's reduce the number of iterations. And just by playing around with these values, you can actually get really cool results. Remember, if you're seeing that most of the faces are being deleted, you can always play around with this less than node as well to just get a few more faces to be present. So you can create infinite variations. Now, the last thing that I want to do is actually get in some lighting. So let's add in a material by pressing Shift A, searching for a set material node, plugging that in right here and choosing the default material. Then I'll switch switch over to my material tab and I'll switch the viewport shading to render. I'll change the world background from here all the way to a black and I'll take the default light and press Alt G to clear its location. Then I'll press G followed by Z to just lift it up by a little bit. And I'll also place my camera right here by selecting the camera and pressing Ctrl Alt 0 to snap camera to view. Then with my camera selected, I can actually just press Alt G to clear its location and press GZ to lift it up just like that so that everything is in frame. Now, with my cube selected in my material properties, I'll change the metallic all the way to one and I'll change the roughness down to maybe 0.25. And I think that looks really cool. The light, you can change the color to whatever you want and you'll get different mandalas of different colors. Again, this is just a very base setup. If you want to add these in as the backgrounds to your sci-fi scenes, you can always change the actual material to a more glass-like material by going to the transmission and just increasing the weight all the way to one and changing the blend mode to maybe something like alpha hashed. If you do have a lot of objects present all around, you'll get nice refractions and things like that. If you switch on screen space refractions, both in the material settings and the render properties, by switching on screen space reflections over here and switching on refraction. All of that will make this look like glass, which will be a lot cooler and will add something to your renders. Of course, adding in bloom and things like that is up to your requirements. And once you're happy with the way everything looks, you can go ahead and just render out images or you could use it as an animation and render out an animation. Thank you so much for watching this video. 
I really do hope you enjoyed it. If you found it useful, check out maybe this tutorial over here where we used recursive subdivision to create some cool animations. Now with the repeat zone, maybe you can use the knowledge of this video, mix it in with that video to create your own unique animation. I'm not sure if I'll be able to post regularly for the next few days, and maybe I'll just post a few compilations of my recommendations for tutorials that you should be watching if you've missed them out, and maybe compilations of 4K 60 FPS animations that I've created over the last couple of days, which you can use as inspiration as well. Regular high quality tutorials will start once again from December 3rd or December 4th, but until then, I will try my best to keep uploading relevant content from time to time. Until my next video comes out, thank you so much for watching, keep creating, and don't forget to stay creative.